Hello class, I'm Haley Roos, and today we're going to be looking at rocks, the rock cycle, and ancient art to help better your understanding about the layers of earth and how it can be a model to show us how the world has changed over time. There's a fun activity at the end, so please stay tuned. Fossils are just so cool to me. I love that they show us things that we've never seen before and will most likely never see again. I know everyone's a big fan of dinosaurs, but some of my favorite fossils are actually creatures that are still around today. It's interesting to see how big or small they used to be. In fact, there was a period of time called the Carboniferous period where everything, even bugs, were huge. That sure would be scary to see today, just like gigantic dragonflies hovering around. We know of this because of fossils preserved in rocks from that time period. Rocks are solid materials made from minerals. Minerals are solid and have never been alive. They have a crystalline structure and a set chemical composition. There are three different types of rocks organized by where they are from, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic. Metamorphic rocks have been changed by pressure and heat inside the earth. They used to be sedimentary, igneous, or a different metamorphic rock, but by chasing, they become a new metamorphic rock. Marble is an example. Sedimentary rocks form when minerals form into layers and harden. All rocks on the surface of the earth's crust can become sedimentary. They are called sedimentary because they are made from sediments. Sediments are soil that have been moved together by water and wind, and soil is a collection of extremely small rocks together. They are pressed together over time and slowly become solid rock, like limestone or sandstone. Igneous rocks are rocks that were so hot they melted into liquid, but have become cool and hardened over time. Hot lava becomes igneous rocks when it comes to the surface and cools. Obsidian is an igneous rock. And just so you know, Lava is when it's above the surface, and magma is when it's below the surface. Just a little something you might not know. You can identify rocks based on their traits such as texture, color, and hardness. People who identify and study rocks are called geologists. Geo means earth. The Grand Canyon is a great model for showing the different rock formations of the earth and how they have changed over time. You can see the different layers of sedimentary rocks very clearly just from color alone. Sedimentary rocks are the type of rock that most often contains fossils. Fossils are preserved remains of plant and animal life. Shells, bones, and leaves are the most commonly preserved fossils because softer parts of plants and animals tend to decompose and are eaten by decomposers like fungi. Fossils within layers of rocks help us know what life was like a long time ago because fossils are only found in layers of earth that they once lived in. If something lived and went extinct 10 million years ago, it will not appear in layers of Earth less than 10 million years old. Not all fossils are made from things that are extinct today. We have fossils of things that have once changed and evolved over time, and we can use fossils to see how they used to look. One example of a fossil from a long time ago that, of something that's still alive is the coelacanth fish. It was alive 65 million years ago during the same time as dinosaurs. The silicon fish is very unique in that it has not changed as much as other things that we have fossils from from a long time ago. People call it a living fossil because of this. Here are some other fossils and artist renditions of what we think they would have looked like alive. Nearly everything we know about prehistoric things is from fossils and rocks, but we can also learn about some prehistoric things from drawings done on caves by ancient humans who didn't know how to read or write. Because they did not write down their history, they are called prehistory, despite being human. Most of the prehistoric drawings are found in caves because they are protected from the elements, like rain or wind. Cave paintings are found all over the world. Paintings of hands, hunters, and even realistic animals show us what life would have been like for these early humans. One of the oldest known caves filled with paintings is Chauvet Cave in France. It is estimated to have had artists painting in it 30,000 years ago. The drawing of rhinos in it show that rhinos used to live in the area that would become France many years ago, despite modern rhinos mainly living in South and Southwest Africa. Paleontology is the study of prehistoric things like plants and animals. Today we are going to be paleontologists ourselves by making our own dig site. A dig site is an area where scientists dig really deep into the earth to see the different layers. Sometimes they dig in certain areas to try and find fossils, but it could be for other reasons as well, like soil samples.
The first step is to draw some uh, different uh, little fossils all over the paper. Try and make them unique. Right here I'm going to do a shell. Shell fossil. Over here I'm going to do a fern. And over here I'm going to do some sort of skull. And let's see, over here I'll do some pretty rocks. And over here I'm going to do a crystal. So I've got something in every little corner, which is the most important part. And then I do it again on this page. Let's do... Let's do an Archaeopteryx, which is a recent one that they found that proves, or at least suggests, that dinosaurs had feathers. Uh-oh. Stick that back under there. Over here is going to be another big gem. And let's see if I turn it this way, I'm going to do another shell. It's an easy way to do a shell. And over here I'm going to do a dragonfly because there are some dragonflies that they have found that are very smushed or preserved in amber so that they know that they were there. They've got two little wings. One here, then like this, and then some legs. I don't know where the legs go, but that should be good. These are the eyes. Let's give those wings some cool little details. That's fun. And some more rocks around the edges. And just another cool rock with some spots on it. Because they don't always find uh, cool stuff. Sometimes it's just rocks, but rocks can be cool. Gonna put another shell. I like the shells a lot. In fact, I'll do some seashells over here of ancient clams or something. Now, let's do uh, some tusks. Maybe it's on, uh, let's see, an ancient mammoth. So let's make a, whatever that's supposed to look like. Probably like this. And I imagine there would be a nose here too, but I don't know if the nose would be preserved. Be your hole. This is for the eyes. And I'm trying to move from the center on this piece to more outside to more outside. And then this piece is going to have just a little bit of the outside. And you'll learn why soon. Mm, what else should I draw? Maybe a different kind of shell. Like that, that could be something for like a hermit crab. And let's do another skull. This one looks kind of human, but it's not human yet. Those are some teeth. And now for the last sheet. This is going to be my most recent one. 
so I can do some sort of modern things or almost modern like how about here is gonna be let's do a bear a bear skull so the ears would go here then bear goes like this and the nose cavity and mouth Then this would be where the nose goes. And this is where the eyes go. That looks kind of like a bear. So this mm -hmm. is what its skull would look like. Color that in. I'm not using any references, so this could be very wrong. But that's okay. Sometimes it's fun to draw with your imagination. And let's do some more gems. I like drawing gems. I think they're fun. They're just a bunch of little lines and then you get to turn them into something cool. And over here I'm gonna get another shell. The shells are the easiest. You just do a swirl and then you go like this. And well we're probably not gonna find any dinosaurs in this layer but let's do another fern. And over here we can do some rocks. That would be like slate. And over here can be some marble, which would be like this, but it would be swirly because it's metamorphic. Actually, it wouldn't be metamorphic, would it? Hmm. I'll look it up in just a second. I've forgotten already. Then over here, Let's do one last thing that's going to be cool. How about... Da, 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 a, here's some amber and we can put a mosquito in it. Here we go. That's a good mosquito. Step two is decide which layer is going to be your oldest. I choose this layer, so nothing's going to change on this one. You just put it on the bottom and wait. Step three is going to be to order the rest of them. So I want this one to be the youngest layer. So this is going to be on the very top. Let's put that over here for now. This one's going to be the second oldest layer. So this one goes right here. And this one's going to be the middle layer, which is going to be the third, uh, third oldest and second youngest. So it goes right here. So all in all, they should be stacked up in one order. Now then it is time for the next step, which is cutting. You don't want to cut through like this. What you want to do in order to get a nice hole without doing that is to lightly bend it and then make a snip and then put your scissors through the hole and start around. a little bit caught under the table. Let me fix that. Be gentle. There we go. So as you can see, it, uh, it's going to layer itself like this. And if they don't line up correctly, like as you can see, I've blocked most of them off in the hole that I made. What you can do is you can add more in later. But for now, let's uh, do the next oldest layer and try and make a hole that's smaller than this one. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to draw a line around it so I know where to cut. And that's where I'm going to cut. And then when I do the layer after that, I can do the same thing from the inside. Let's stick that there and fold over. Don't bend it harshly, just do a gentle one. Snip. And now I go along the line. pretty good. Now I'm going to do the same thing using this as a guide. 
I'm going to draw a circle on the inside. I should have made more stuff that's smaller and in the middle, but that's okay. We can always go back and change it. It's a shame that these, these cool things get to be hidden from the world, but that's for the scientists to figure out when they dig deeper. And done. Now let's see how they look all layered. This one's going to be right here. So you can see I got a little bit of the shell. This one's going to be right here. Got a little bit of the, uh, the little dragonfly and the different shell. And this one goes on the very top. We got a little bit of everything. So since I can't see everything all that good, I'm going to go in and add more stuff. So let's put another skull here. I like the skull. This one's going to be the same kind of dinosaur skull. Give it a hole for the eye. Give it lots of teeth. And how about a bone? Just a loose bone. There we go. And put that fern in over here. That's pretty good. And let's put in some rocks. Make another dragonfly over here since I messed up the first one by hiding it. But it's okay. It's all okay. You can always change stuff. Uh oh. My trash just blew away, but I'll pick that up later. And what do I have else over here? Oh, I've got my little dino friend with wings. So let's put just another amount of wings over here. Hidden. Over here I've got some shells that were hidden and a mammoth skull. So I'll put the shell over here and put the tusks over here. And this is also a good model for how you may dig straight down and you don't see something and it's just hidden out of reach. And th what they can do is they can go out and then they do this in like a little cone so that they can slowly go outwards and outwards to try and get anything they might have missed. And then this is it. So now that I've got everything all looking nice, let's make another bone over here. This is the kind of bone that a dog might chew, but it looks nice. It's time to glue everything together. So what we're going to be doing next is gluing them all together. You don't have to glue them all around every single part because that might cover up but you can if you'd like to what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue along this side so that I can flip up and look at all the layers beneath I think that's going to be fun now let's start with the lowest layer I'm going to be using liquid glue but you can also be using staples and also this glue is better if you don't want to wrinkle anything but this one might hold better so it's really up to you I'm gonna gently put it's a little old, so I have to wait for it to get there. Then this is going to get messy. I'm going to rub it in with my hands so that it gets nice and even. Then I place this one down and make sure it's even. That's even enough. Then press. Now we wait for that one to dry. And while that's drying, we can glue these two together. I decided that I want it to be this way, same way as this one. So let's put that there and glue it along here. Let's actually rotate it like this. Let me see if it still looks good. Yes, because I think that I'm okay with covering up the shells, but I want to keep my mammoth skull. So we're going to do it again. Add the glue much more this time so I can just sort of go with it easily rub it in be sure to wash your hands when you're done this is very messy but it's very useful place it down and rub it in so it's nice and firm and we wait for that to dry too oh I got some over there let me 
I'll wipe that off in just a second. And now here's the last glue. Put it on the side that you wanna glue down. This one won't be as visible, so be sure to pick whichever one you like least. Rub it in, just so it covers a bigger area. And let's put this one on top. Oops. Press it down. And now we have our own dig site. Next step is the cleanup. So I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to put the cap back on my glue and put everything away. Stop. Today we made a model of how different layers of earth can show us how the world has changed over time. We can use fossils and cave paintings to learn more about what life was like before we even had written records. We can also learn from drawings modern scientists have made based on fossils for what the ancient plants and animals may have looked like. It is thanks to the different types of rocks, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic, and the rock cycles that fossils are even made. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for what I should teach next, please send an email to info at communityworksla.org. Thank you and goodbye!